Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Transcendence. Uh, this video is going to be about co-op mining. Uh, basically, that's getting together with friends to mine out each other's worlds, to share resources like crystals, white iron ores, and specialties. To start with, I'm going to discuss why this is important. Basically, Genshin Impact has been a game where there's a finite amount of resources involved. As you get higher in adventure rank, the number of chests that you get drop dramatically because you're discovering them in order to help uh, level up. At a certain point in time, you're going to want to be upgrading your character's weapons, and that's usually really easy. But since there's less chests when you hit a higher adventure rank, and you're also upgrading your other weapons, you end up having basically no more weapons to use. And in fact, you have to use these uh, enhancement ores that you usually also get from chests. Problem is twofold with chests, right? One, you can't get weapons, and two, you can't get ores. And once you get to like the really high adventure ranks and you're looking to ascend your weapons even further past level 70, the costs and uh, the amount of experience that you need for each weapon skyrockets. So how do you get more enhancement ores then? Well, you talk with the blacksmith here and he actually allows you to make these fine enhancement ores daily. And as you can see, I've already exhausted my daily amount, but basically you can make 30 of the tier three enhancement ore per day. And that will cost you four crystals per enhancement ore, which is 120 crystal. Now the next issue is this, crystals respawn every three days, white iron ores, respawn every two days, and iron ores respawn daily. So what you will need is three days worth of crystal here, which is 360 crystal in the end. Um, in the world itself, I don't think there's more than maybe 130 crystal chunks that you can hit. So to solve this, uh, co-op mining is a really elegant and easy solution to the problem. So basically, my friends and I are meeting up twice per week to mine out all of our maps. So the route that we take hits 95 chunks of crystal, which is about 400 crystals per full set of runs. Did do a white iron ore and crystal only speed run. Took about, you know, 30 minutes or so to get everything done. So you're looking at about two hours of total time, but it's totally worth it because you'll have plenty of crystal ore, plenty of uh, white iron ore to use for all of your forging purposes. So let's get started with the run through. There's going to be maps at the end as well. And I hope you enjoy this video. One of the main things to remember is you shouldn't be taking core lapis from each of the party members. That is a specialty that you can't take. Otherwise, everything else is fair game. So you should have one person who's the party leader who's going to mine everything. Make sure that everyone is together when they are. And so, and I always like to announce where we're going to be going first. And I always have like a rotation that I do. So let's start. Okay, we're gonna go to Guyon Stone or uh, Guyon Stone Forest first, the islands outside of Geo. Nice spawn of crystals on the side and some core lapis on the other side. But we're really interested in these crystals. So we're gonna wait for every party member to get here because there's a, a problem with servers where the crystals like to despawn. Uh, it's also helpful to have Ming Guang in your party. She's able to sniff out all the other stuff that's around. So there's a three crystals there. There's a core lapis there. I'm just going to leave it for now to move on. We're going to port down to the domain first. And usually what I like to see, big crystal chunks. So you'll see that uh, I start to ignore things that aren't really worth it. So we're going to move towards the left first here. And there's an island full of ruin guards here. So you got to be careful. And the point of this is not to kill anything because you want to be able to get out of here as fast as possible. So I start another run with another friend's world and we discovered that there's actually two more crystal chunks. Be sure to grab these on your way in as well. There's one right here and one just right around the corner. These are a little bit tucked away so it's harder to see. We're just going for big clusters today. I'm going to start breaking these clusters. There's one right here, two right here, and I think a third one right here. And then um, across the way, this is going to take a bit. You're going to have to take a little swim here. Okay, so there's a bunch of crystals on this rock. There is a elite um, uh, rolly boy here, as I like to call him. Uh, I don't like getting him, but there's a bunch of crystals here. And remember, Noctilus Jade is one of the specialties that you can hit and everyone can grab. See, there's the aggro on that. So remember, uh, we're trying to get every little spot here. So from here, we're going to move uh, towards the inner part of the like Lira Harbor. Going to take Mount Tianheng as the te teleport. And Tianheng has like two different places and a secret hidden cave. Um, we're going to go for the two outside places first. Uh, but 
those spots you can just come off. So you're just gonna slide down the mountain after the, the waypoint. Oop. Don't want to hit that without everyone being here. I'm there. Oh, okay. He's probably lagging then. I'm actually desync too because I'm not showing the hits anymore. So there's two over here and three. Perfect. And just right across the way underneath this mountain top, there's also more. And you guys can feel free to mark this on your map too. I will post the map on description and probably have it actually at the end of the video so you guys can see exactly what it is. You can see, you can see Tessius is actually desynced. <laughs> All right, and then the last thing is you're gonna go through this area. There's a lot of monsters here, but it's okay. We're just gonna walk through, ah, walk through, climb this area here into the little cave. Oh my gosh. Through the little cave right here. And this is a little cave with just a few Noctilus shade. And then after that, we're just gonna pour it out to the TP right next to Mount Tianhang. We're gonna be heading down this river area Remember, the intent is not to kill these mobs because it's going to waste time. So we hid down the riverbed and into the bottom of the river here. And there's just going to be this little cave with an Abyss Mage. This Abyss Mage is actually technically an elite. And at world level 4, he spawns as a level 60 character. We just killed the Abyss Mage. There's three crystal patches, but I killed one of them while, while trying to kill the Abyss Mage. And then from here, we're going to uh, keep going downwards along this bank. If I can... Get out of the water. Right. So down this bank, there's another secret cave. Um, a lot of the secret caves that you see usually contain, like, uh, Geoculus or something else. But uh, we don't often see them because of... Uh, you just sort of forget because there's just so much to explore in this world. And that's nobody's fault. So hopefully this will help you guys get guided towards it, though. So there's another Abyss Mage here. I'm not going to hit him. So there's a good uh, couple crystal chunks here for you to grab. Okay, and from here, uh, we're going to be porting to Lingju Pass. Lingju Pass is a very interesting place with a lot of elites. So if you're doing the elite grind, uh, I'll post a different video of the elite grind. It's one that I found on Reddit. Um, I'm not sure who the user is. I'll find out who it is and credit them. But anyways, from Lingju Pass, uh, we're going to follow this riverbank and go away from the ruins. And we're going to hit this three patch of crystal first. All right, uh, so now my friends are arriving down from the sky. Remember, there's a little travel time for this one. But the criteria for your mining should always be something like, is it close to close enough to a waypoint? Is it juicy enough? Um, and as you'll see, we'll, we'll still do a little bit more traveling for the white iron ore. So we're going to cross the river here. And like I said, it's impossible. If you're doing this all the time, if your forge is al always running every single day, there's no way you're going to have enough crystal. Unless you have some very generous friends who are willing to donate to you the crystal. So from here, we're going to go across... It doesn't matter about the aggroing. We're just climbing up here. There's two white iron ore patches here. This place is really good for a white iron ore. I'm gonna grab it here. There's one slot. I mean, if they want to kill it, it's fine. But like I said, it's just a waste of time. So the white iron ore is in this corner over here. And from here, we're going to move towards this mountain. There's quite a bit of uh, white iron ore up here. So here it is, running out of stamina, man. I guess I can pop a stam boost if I really wanted to make this even faster. So there they are. The server owner could actually, I mean, the uh, person who owns the server itself can actually take a look at these rocks to discover other stuff, I think. Yeah, for himself, but not for the party members. Those don't work because they count as chests. And then these last two right here, there is an Abyss Mage usually behind me, but like I said, no need to aggro him. And that's it. So that's uh, all the white iron ore really fast. And from here, we're going to port to right below Dunyu Ruins. And the Dunyu Ruins one is a little bit tricky because um, it's actually in... Like, you face the wrong way, right? You face the wrong way when you come out of it. So you got to go this way and just hug the, around the corner and fly in. I'm going to wait for my party members to get here. Um, before I go inside because I'm going to be aggroing a lot of enemies. <laughs> so I'll wait for them to start moving downwards. Yeah, I see t three. Yeah, I see them all moving now. Okay, great. <sighs> now to recommence. 
So okay, all my friends are moving down down now. They're all here, so we're gonna go down into this little cavernous area. And there's gonna be five patches here. And usually you want to have like maybe one, no more than two people hitting at the same time so you guys are all on the same page. And from here, this is a really easy next uh, area. After you're done mining it all, you just fly down. It's good. There's another two patches here, including a core lapis. From here, we're going to port to Quajo Slope. And Quajo Slope is actually kind of an interesting area because we're porting three times back up to the waypoint. And I'll tell you why it's three times. It's three different locations that are hard to access, but it's worth it because you're basically reloading the same area. And if you have a fast enough computer, it's much more worth it than walking around and trying to find the path. <laughs> There's a guy freaking out over there. Do you guys see the archer? The archer guy's freaking, he's freaking out. Okay, well anyways, okay, so everyone's here. Um, we're gonna fly down this way first. Um, I found a better route out uh, into this area. You're just gonna take this area out. So uh, I'm gonna show you where the patch is with the character that I was playing, but this is actually the better route. You just come up to this mountain and glide down. It's faster because then you don't have to do that little climb over there that you see me do later on. So this is just faster. It might be a tiny bit of a climb. And right here is the patches. Mm -hmm. There's three, I believe. So we're going to teleport back up to the waypoint. We're going to go to the secret cave now. And through the secret cave is this way. There's usually a guy standing guard. But traveling downwards, we're going to move towards the big mountain with the withered tree. This is part of the quest line. If you have trouble finding exactly the area, even though you've marked it, you'll know that you're in the right spot when you see these two white iron ores. There's one right here. And then the other one's right here in the corner. And from here, what you do is you just climb this rock and you're actually at the cave entrance right there. And you can just drop right in for the crystals. And after that, you just take the port right back up again. And we're gonna, get we're gonna take four more patches of crystal. And those crystals are gonna be actually within the Quajo Slip itself. It's behind this big boy right here. Uh, if you don't want a hard time, don't aggro the big boys or clear out your map before your homies get here, you know? There's two. And right there, you'll see the third one. You just hit this one. Big guy got aggroed. Don't worry about that. And then the last one is right here, the fourth one. We're going to go to Ching Young Peak. Um, now, Ching Young Peak is kind of interesting. There's three patches that are relatively close but require a little bit of flying. So they're right off facing the path. You'll see one, two, and then a third one that's hidden over here. So we're going to go to this one first right here. So here's the first chunk. Uh, as you can tell, I hate these kind of chunks because they're all scattered all over the place. There's one right below on this little platform and the one over there. And those are the three we're going to be taking together. I think there's a fourth one somewhere over here, but we're not going to be interested in that one. But the, the good thing is that once... <laughs> So cute. Once we're done over here, we just we can just walk over to this platform and take the updraft and continue along our way. And we're going down into Dream Karst, which has a bunch of the hidden chest uh, from the video that I just posted. There's four crystal patches here. Just be careful not to randomly die when you're dropping down into them. So there's a fifth patch uh, just below this the waterfall area. So this is the last one. Last crystal patch that we're going to be taking together. So we're done with this area. Just those two ports. Remember the front area and this this area for Drian Karst. And then that little tiny extra patch next to the hidden chest toads. From here, we're going to go to Mount Aozang. Now, Mount Aozang is special because this is one of the mountains where there's a ton of white iron ore. But the problem is coordinating getting the white iron ore isn't worth it. So there's only two white iron ore patches that we're going to take. And they're just right down the mountain area right here in the corner. After this, we're just gonna fly right down and drop down again. And there's gonna be the best cave here. There's one of the Rolly boys again here protecting the cave, but he's not gonna be a problem. He hasn't spawned yet, but this has, uh, I think, nine or 10 patches. And from here, we're gonna go to Qingse Village. There's gonna be a board that pops out here. So if you're the first one to port here, you're probably gonna get hit by the board, but I guess because it's raining, it didn't spawn. And you're gonna scale this uh, wall first and you'll see them right here there's two right here and then right across the way there's another three now the next area is kind of um 
not needed, but it's to the right under Wooing Hill. There's a little cavern here that has specialties. Um, this cave is a little bit easily missed uh, because you just get the Geoculus and then you just never come back here again, really. <laughs> the cavern is right here below the waypoint for Oceanid, the uh, Oceanid boss. There's uh, at least one uh, one Noctilus Jade and a couple of White Iron Ore, again, in the side right here. So again, this one is skippable if you don't want specialties or if you're not interested in White Iron white iron ore from Mingyang village we're going to take the first uh, waypoint there there's several mines in this area and it's part of a big quest as well but we're going to be running downwards towards the uh south uh southwest here and out outside there's not actually that much stuff there's only like white one white iron chunk i think that's it that's really what you want is the one white iron chunk there's some specialties but this is really for the specialties here from here i like to report back to the area because i don't like running and from there, we're going to head towards the northeast. We're going to slide right down this hill. So we got a little lost. You're supposed to slide down the corner right here. You have to actually go across the way underneath the water here. So you can ignore these mobs and just swim right underneath into the cave. There's going to be some white iron ore and some noctilus jade here. Save your time from walking. Teleport back up just to the north of it. This one's just dropping down off the mountain. This is just for specialties. Um, if you want to skip this, it's fine. The next area we're going to go to is we're going to take the domain teleport. And the domain teleport will give us access to more specialties again. The first specialty area is right around the corner. And from then, we're going to travel to the other area. And uh, from here, we're going to travel just upwards. We're not going to take the teleport from this little area with the rocks. There's another mine here. Yeah, it's really yeah. to get everything out of your map, right? So. This is one I think that I didn't do together with them before. So it's probably new to them. Uh, the next part we're going to take is right above the dragon spine area. It is a domain. And right under here is a uh, very cool cave. It's just a short walk away from the domain. You come up. And right behind all this, uh, all these guys is just the cave itself. From here, we're porting up to Wolvenden. Wolvenden is one of my favorite areas, but this is a good patch to farm with everybody. And so here's the area. Plus there's also two additional crystal chunks right across the street. They're demarked by these two water slimes here and this log that you can't really cross. You have to jump across it actually. You'll fall off, but it's on this tiny mountain here. Let's take the teleport right above it. And from here, we're going to backtrack down towards the behind the waypoint. There's one crystal chunk here and a little white iron ore over there on the side. And then we're going to go right back up to the waypoint area. There's some more white iron ore right here. So we're going to take the waypoint above that. Oh, Bright Crown Canyon, right? And we're going to take this teleport twice. The first time, we're going to be dropping down into the area below. There's going to be a patch of like three or so white iron ore right here. Yes, I'd like to take this moment to thank my sponsor, NordVPN. <laughs> Dude, even Ning Guang laughed at, the, at my joke. Just gonna take the TP right back up. And there's gonna be a white iron ore valley just to the left of here. It's just in this valley here. So from Bright Cram, we're gonna go right to, into Storm Terror's Lair. There's actually scattered crystal patches all over Storm Terror's Lair. However, we're just gonna be interested in about four of them. And I like to start on this platform right here, just down the area. Uh, there's going to be a crystal ore chunk right there, one over there, and then three. And then from here, we're going to cross the little river bridge here for four. And from here, there's the last fifth one up there. The last uh, couple areas is going to be Stormbearer Mountain, Stormbearer Point, and of course, the Abyss area. These are the last like four or so places we're going to be visiting. From Stormbearer, this, this waypoint is super easy to find and path to the place. It's just right above this rock. There's a couple crystal, lots of white iron ore. And from here, you're just going to cross the riverbed. And there's more white iron ore. And after that, we're going to take the port up to uh, Stormbearer's Point. Stormbearer's Point has one more juicy area. And this one's really easy to come out. Just, you know, take the dive off the point. Last area to go to is the Musk Reef which is where the Spiral Abyss is. If you've um, unlocked the Spiral Abyss, which is a Venture Rank 20, then you'll be able to get this waypoint as well. As you can see, there's a bunch of white iron ore everywhere here. So just to recap really quick, I've uh, posted these maps uh, specifically in the description below. 
Um, thank you, at Press Seal. Not sure if that's a Twitter link or not for the high def, high res map. Uh, here's Legend, a Stars Waypoint, or Domain. Um, the diamond with the little blue in it is crystal. The pentagon with gray in it is white iron and the yellow is specialty. You start in Guyon Stone Forest where there's crystal chunk. You go to the domain of Guyon, there's crystal. And down south, crystal. Down south, there's a little island. Going right across, you go to the Mount Tian Hang uh, waypoint first and you're gonna slide down the mountain, get the crystal. You're gonna slide over to the other side of it, get the crystal. Climb over here, there's a little secret cave where there's just specialty jades. And then, of course, you take the next waypoint just right below Mount Hang right here. And then you're going to fly down the river. This mage that's inside of here, but there's crystal as well as uh, Nautilus Jade. Going right across down the river bank, you'll see another abyss mage in here. That's a cryo abyss mage, but there's a bunch of crystal in there. After that, you're going to take the Lingju Pass waypoint. You're going to fly down towards the river bank. And then there's a pile of three or four crystals here. Uh, crossing the river, you're going to climb up the mountain. You're going to take the white iron ore, white iron ore again here. And coming back right up to Dunyu Ruins, you're going to take this waypoint and you're going to hit the uh, crystals that are inside the ruin structure. And then right after that, you climb up the ladder, you fly across, you're going to take the crystals right outside of the ruin guards right here. After that, you're going to take the waypoint to Quajo Slope. And remember, we're going to take this teleport three times. The first time, you're going to fly, uh, come up the slope and then fly downwards. Uh, you're going to take these three crystal patches, teleport back. Then you're going to come down here, go to the secret cave. Remember, it's demarked by two white iron ores right here. Come back to the teleport. You're going to go across Quajo Slope. These might be a little bit slightly off. Um, I kind of guesstimated to where they were, but you're just going to go northwards and you're just going to find the crystal chunks that are right behind a small cliff. After taking the other last crystal chunk that's uh, within the chasm itself, you're going to go up to the waypoint right here again in Qingyang Peak and then uh, fly downwards uh, towards the north. Grab the three crystal clusters here, climb back up, take the shortcut through the little logs. Uh, that'll spawn a path right there that has like the wind gust. Take the wind gust up, go down Driyang Karst, which is this whole area down here. There's a waterfall with four of them, and then you just drop down further down the waterfall, and then there's one more right there. Then you're going to teleport to Mount Alzang. Uh, uh, if you want the white iron ore, there's the two white iron ore just right down the cliff. Otherwise, there's the big cave right here with the crystal. Uh, from here, you're going to take the teleport to Qingse Village. You're going to climb the wall. And then right above the wall, there's a cluster of three crystals and then another cluster uh, along the waterfall side with like four or five crystals. From there, you're going to take the teleport here. Um, there's a specialty in the side of a chasm. Then you can take the teleport right outside of Oceanid. And there's some more specialties. And then you can take the teleport down to Mingyong Village where there's a set of three mines right here each with white iron ore and specialties. But remember, you're going to port back every single time three times to save your time from walking. Then you're going to port down to the domain from Mingyang Village. There's a little slight area right here. Uh, from here, you're just going to walk back up and go take the last mine right here. Then you're going to port up right above Dragon Spine here under Springvale Dawn Winery. It's a domain, uh, Valley of Remembrance, I believe. Then you're going to go uh, around the corner, climb up uh, towards the Hilly Churro Camps, and then there's a cave right behind it with Crystal. Then you're going to port to Wolvendom. Uh, east from Wolfendom, you're going to see the big uh, mountain of ores and crystals right there. And right after those, you just cross the way. And above the water slimes, there's two crystal ores. Then you're going to teleport here. There's a crystal right here. And then right around the corner behind it is a iron ore. From here, you can teleport to Bright Crown Canyon. Uh, it's two teleports. You're going to come down here first for the three white iron ore, teleport back up, and go into the valley with a bunch of white iron ore. And then you're going to go and teleport to Storm Terror's Lair. You're going to take the most west teleport. Uh, and then you're going to hop down onto the platform first, grab the crystal here, and then grab uh, another crystal that's like a little bit farther down. Then you're, there's a bridge here. You're going to find the bridge with the crystal right here. And then there's another crystal right here. From this crystal, you're going to teleport back to Stormbearer Mountains. And from Stormbearer Mountains, you're already facing the way you're supposed to go. So you go above the path, and then there's a place where there's uh, iron ore as well as crystal. Then you cross the river again, and there's a little iron ore patch. After that, you teleport up to Stormbearer Point, uh, go up the slope, fly down, and you'll see the iron ore and crystal patch. Then you teleport from Stormbearer Point to Musk Reef, where there's a bunch of white iron ore waiting for you. And that's it. You're finished. I've also included a crystal one, which has a uh, much um, less route. It just shows all the crystal you can get. If you're only interested in crystal, this route will probably take you about, uh, I'd say no more than 
10 minutes to do uh, once you get familiar with it. So again, thank you at Presseal for the high res maps. So that's about it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this co-op mining video. If uh, you found it helpful, please like it, favorite, subscribe for more content. I'm live every single day at twitch.tv slash transcendence. And like I said, I'll be posting links for all the maps that all the maps without <laughs> stuff, without the iron, white iron ore, whatever, and so on and so forth. Uh, but grinding a lot on Genshin, so please stop by if you can. Thank you guys and have a wonderful day. Bye.